Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Now, the, let's see, it's worth checking out the website for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because it, I put a lot of work into it, so I want people to visit. But there's everything that I've done, pretty much, is on there. And, uh, yeah, it's got a lot of good stuff on there. Not just these recordings, but it lets you get a sense of other stuff that I've done and also things that might be useful to you because I've got a lot of relaxation recordings that I've made over the years some short, some longer and I kind of specialise in sleep sessions as well so I've got hundreds of uh, sessions for sleep and insomnia which at the same time are also very relaxing so there's a lot of things to choose from that may be an addition to this or this may be an addition to them so I'm going to start with what I want to talk about today couple of things actually that's kind of come to my mind is with anxiety anyone that's had anxiety for um, any amount of time very likely to have depression as well someone with depression isn't necessarily going to be having anxiety but from my own experience of having I've had depression without anxiety I've had anxiety that led to depression because I was depressed about the anxiety and it makes sense really because I don't think anybody's okay with it and acute anxiety and stress uh, panic and all that stuff is it is it can be depressing because it's so horrible but what I wanted to talk about is in some ways flipping it on its head because with anxiety I can't keep saying the word anxiety and stress you know you know what this podcast's about so with these conditions the advice is always about what you need to do what you can do what you may do to make changes to reduce the anxiety to reduce the stress to help reduce the uh, panic sensations the you know all that stuff but what I don't think is necessarily focused upon is what is actually missing what's missing from your life and I'll reword that what needs 
are not being met for you in your life. Now I'm quite a big believer in making changes if they're needed. And I know it's not for everybody and some people have got you know, big financial commitments like mortgages, children and stuff like that. Yet, if you're doing something and you're profoundly unhappy doing it, and then you start feeling anxious and you start feeling, you know, panicky. then maybe your body, your mind, your brain, your unconscious mind, whatever you want, is actually giving you a message. It's sending you a signal that something needs to be changed, that your needs are not being met. I don't know what those needs are. That's something that only you can delve into. But there's basic needs that we all have. Being happy. is you know after the basics of eating having somewhere to sleep shelter oxygen gravity you know the things that I've talked about before but those basic things human contact and that can depend some people feel lonely when they're not around people I don't really I don't really have that but a lot of people do and some people need human contact a lot more than others physical contact just having someone tap you on the shoulder a smile a friendly voice words of concern kind words I mean sometimes going out even if you don't see anyone to talk to just seeing a little baby eating a, an ice lolly or something just seeing a big smile on the little, little child's face or seeing a, a little dog how cute little dog you know with his little tail waggling It can give you something that perhaps you're not getting. But when I talk about needs, what needs are not being fulfilled, there'd be something deeper. Because if you're if you're unhappy in whatever situation you're in it needs to be looked at it may be temporary everything is temporary but it might need resolving I had a job and I tried to stay with the job even though the panic started you know, 2002 was really bad for a long time, it seemed. Eventually, at the end of 2003, I quit the job. 
because I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't face going in there. So I lost my income, uh, lost friends that I had at the job because I didn't see them anymore. But I think it was the right thing to do because of the level of unhappiness that I was getting to when I was there. It was too much. Now my needs were not being met. Leaving the job didn't, it didn't necessarily give me the needs that I needed, didn't fill that gap. But it reduced the pain. Reduced the emotional pain. Which is what I needed. Almost like You know when people have a a boil of a spot and they pop it and they just feel the, the release. It's almost like that. I'm not comparing my job to a boil but So what needs are not being met? And I would say we've all got needs, unmet needs. But from an angle of happiness, from an angle of anxiety, stress, panic, because if you're happy and all your needs are being met, there wouldn't be any anxiety, not at a level of illness, there wouldn't be the level of depression. And of course, going back to genetics, the brain, environment, the past, all those things have an influence on our mental states. So with my of my situation I would probably attribute every all of those to my situation the past childhood and all that stuff but I'd also say genetics based on what I know about the family and what I've seen with other members so there's that genetic I'm not the only one that has had problems and then environmental, which you can kind of say is part of the past as well. But current environmental, that's something that can be changed. And when we make any changes, this isn't just me saying this, this is scientifically proven stuff. Our brains change. Our brains are always changing, but our brains actually rewire. Our brains are elastic in a sense of, it has plasticity, I think that's the correct term. They're not made of elastic bands. All plastic but uh, it's lucky they're not made of plastic because no one seems to like plastic these days they have to be replaced with cardboard or something so we can't change the past and the reason I'm talking about this is because We've not got anxiety for nothing. There's a reason for it. You know, it's not just, it's not there for no reason. It sometimes feels like it can be there for no reason and it can come on for no reason. I realize that. But it's not, realistically, you know that, I know that. Anxiety, stress, any mental 
health issue, which anxiety is, stress is, if it's causing problems. Normal levels of anxiety and stress is not a mental health issue. But what normal for one person, a normal level may be different from someone else. thinking back to when I first started having the extreme anxiety I almost felt like a layer of my skin had been removed there's that level of sensitivity that things that didn't seem to bother me or were able to even touch me before suddenly had an effect I was like hypersensitive you know, I remember I'd be walking down a town and someone, just, in, just normally, and someone would walk a little bit too close to me and I'd make me jump. Now that's not how I am as a person. I'm not a timid, I don't, you know, I'm not walking around um, worried about people generally. I have done, but it's a kind of rule in my life a normal my kind of normal state would be someone to I'd be aware of what's around me of course if someone starts running towards me I'd I might yeah, be on guard obviously but I'd be jumping I'd actually literally physically jump I wouldn't be jumping up and down but I would it would make me almost like having physical hiccups and that was awful so that level of anxiety and stress that is a mental health issue and that's where I think some people get a little bit confused or show perhaps they don't mean to but they show disrespect towards people that are ill because everybody gets stressed and everybody has anxiety at some point but it's different getting you know having having some anxiety before your wedding day before you, you know, or when you go to collect your diploma for your degree and you've got to get on stage and collect it or doing the best man's speech at a wedding or, you know, whatever, doing an oral exam at school. That can be anxiety and stress, in, you know, inducing. But that's normal, I would say, for everybody. Surgeons, doctors, fire, fire people, you know, fire service, people in the army, people. The first time they did something that they're trained to do, guaranteed they were anxious and nervous. The first time a surgeon did an operation on their own. The first time a pilot flew a plane with someone or on their own. Well, they usually got someone with them, but the first time they actually took off and were in control of that plane, they're lying if they say they weren't anxious and nervous and a bit stressed about it. Because it's human nature to be. But if they were at the level of mental illness, the level of having, you know, acute anxiety, it would be dangerous for them to be in charge of a plane. So there's a big line, big difference. And some people don't, I don't think they kind of understand that. Because everybody's had anxiety and stress. And, you know, some people felt ill through stress. 
but they don't have an illness they just had it at that time they had an exam coming up uh, drive, I've known people that had driving tests for the driving you know, um, license and felt physically sick bundle of nerves as soon as they got the test over and done with got that marked and ticked off and you know successfully got their license or even if they failed at the end of it they were relaxed again once they'd done it they were fine and of course if they passed they were happy in fact I know someone that failed and they were happy just to have done it and that they were glad it was over but that's natural so stress and anxiety is natural not and sometimes people talk about it in books as if well anxiety is normal but you know small levels of stress no large levels of stress and anxiety is natural as well but not prolonged not for long periods of time you know it's, my oh, I can't I can't talk about personal private things can I but a member of my family was going back and forward to hospital for his daughter uh, last year now I know and he was working trying to hold down a job and just got a new house had a mortgage I know that he was under huge amounts of anxiety and stress huge amounts more than me and I don't say that as like I've got a lot going on but he was under more stress than I personally I can't imagine having dealt with it you know, I can't imagine how horrible it would to have, have to have dealt with what he dealt with. But he did. His level of stress may have been higher than mine has ever been. Ever in my life. I don't know. But he dealt with it. I don't know how he dealt with it. But he's got, you know, he dealt with it. And some people are able to cope. And I'm trying to put it in a, a nice way so it doesn't sound demeaning to people that can't. Like, and I'm talking about myself there. It's almost like it's putting someone down saying, oh, you can't cope with that. There's nothing wrong with not being able to deal with something and not being able to cope with something. We're not superhuman. I can I kind of almost feel I want to put myself down because I can't, because I didn't cope as well as perhaps I could have done in the situations I've been in. But ultimately I probably coped as well and you probably have as well. You coped as well as you're able to with the knowledge you had, with the skills you had at the time. And we're still here. So, I know that I go off on a tangent, I understand that. I'm coming back to the subject of what is it that you need in your life it doesn't have to be what you need to what do you need to change so it's not a case necessarily of taking something away with me I felt I needed to give something up which was the job I had and it's not the only job that I've given up due to stress and anxiety but it was the first one that I I was really good at that job. It's probably the only job that I was really, really good at. Sort of as an adult. I was quite good at paper rounds when I was a kid. 
but uh, it was something that I was really and I had respect from the people around me and you know, well, as for what I did maybe not as a person I don't know but as for the job that I did so I gave up something very important to me something that I didn't want to give up because I didn't I couldn't see it any other way I couldn't find it was almost like I was running away but at the same time I was thinking clearly because I didn't want to get laid off I didn't want to get sacked I didn't want to go and have long, long, long t- periods of illness, and and then you know, eventually just leave. I had, I think I was signed off for a month by my doctor, and I'd stayed. I was going in regularly. I had some time off in two thousand, the end of two thousand and two, beginning of two thousand and three. But then I got all the way through to November, and then the doctor gave me a month's notice, a month's off, and I used that as my notice. I just said I'm given my a month's notice, and I won't be in. And I do kind of regret it. <laughs> yeah, actually, I regret it a bit. But at the time, I didn't look at what I needed. I looked at what I didn't need. I didn't need to be in an environment where I was under stress. And because I was good at what I did, I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but I was I was good at what I did. So I was given responsibility to look after other people and to help like train other people up a little bit and which I enjoyed. And I relished that. Yeah, I kind of, I guess I couldn't cope with it. But I didn't address what I needed. I addressed what I didn't need. Which was the stress and anxiety. Those buttons being pushed. So I dropped it. Dropped the job, got rid of it got a little part-time job and I ended up getting into debt which I ended up eventually going bankrupt in 2006 so I'm not saying get rid of your job I'm not saying get rid of anything what I'm wondering what I'm inquiring into is what what in your life are you not getting that you need if you think about it like a diet like dietary situation we all need certain vitamins I could probably benefit from is it vitamin V vitamin, vitamin B I think or maybe vitamin C because I don't go out enough during the day so that would be an example in a sense of what's lacking so in your life what's that one thing and it doesn't have to be just one but as an example what's that think of one thing that would make a big difference to your life that you can incorporate so for me I learned to meditate and it took me a while to really um, embrace it it took a while 
and it helped really did help and because I was going to a Buddhist center I got to meet people that were going to the meditation got to make some friends and um, so it added something to my life that I didn't have before I didn't have a social life before not one that didn't involve alcohol so I'm around these Buddhists and none well most of them weren't drinking alcohol so it was it was a different environment it was like a healthy quite a healthy environment for me to be around and they were very relaxed which is also going back to the environment that you're in now because our environment affects us the people that we're around affects us so if you're around angry people around stressed people even if they're fine physically and mentally fine they're not ill in any way they just happen to be for whatever reason very angry very aggressive verbally um, stressed like living a, a very kind of chaotic uh, lifestyle we're affected by those people we're about or we're around we're affected by them if you see someone once a week probably not going to be too affected by them as much as if you're around them every day or even more if you're living with them and also they're going to be affected by us so if we're reacting to them by being stressed they're just going to get even more stressed and angry perhaps so what's missing and I know some people will listen to this might say the word money I'm missing money because money would be the solution to all my problems and I would I would say that anybody that has never thought that is lying anyone that says that have never thought that a big injection of cash would be the solution to all the problems we've all thought that at one time at least I've thought that probably thousands of times I still do kind of feel that it would be it definitely be a help it can't hurt can it someone suddenly gave you a hundred thousand pound or a hundred thousand dollars it opens up possibilities but I don't have that option for you I can't give a hundred thousand dollars to everybody I wish I could So it's a case of looking, what else is there? What other things? Of course you can make the money. You could decide to devote your energy into making money and stuff like that. And then I got thinking, because I do think about these recordings before I make them. It might not seem like it when I wobble on and off of the subject and I also realised that I do talk about myself possibly too much but I'm going to continue to do that so sorry about that I'm, I'm not sorry I use myself as an example because I can't use you as an example because I don't know your situation I could if you contact me with 
your story or with some questions, go to my website, contact me. I'm happy to start including those of you that listen and maybe give some thoughts, some ideas to a question that you may pose or use your story as an example, your success story. So that way you got to, don't have to listen about me all the time. But what I was thinking, someone said to me the other day, um, a very, very, like a friend, was very down. And in all fairness, I can't, I said, I can't go into details, but he's got a very damn good reason to feel down. There's some really extreme stuff happening at the moment. So, I can't be a counsellor to a friend because it's a different relationship. I can listen, um, but there was one thing that he said that he had nothing, that he didn't feel that there was any point, no point to get out of bed, no, there's nothing, and but no purpose in life, generally. And I said to him that I don't feel that way. I think it was more like a generalised state, a generalised comment that life is you know, like life is crap and life's pointless and there's no point to it all and, you know. So instead of saying to him, you know, things will be better, which they will, instead of saying that this is just temporary, which it is, I just kind of thought, well... I just said to him, I don't, I don't feel that way. Sometimes I do, but not all the time, not on a general, in a general situation, I've got this, the the podcast, the videos, the website, this free service that I've been offering since 2006. I've got this, something that I built and created myself. And it gives me purpose. And it's not for everybody. You know, not everybody's going to want to talk into a, a microphone. It's probably like, for some people, it'd be pointless. What? Why would I want to do that? What's the point in that? It's just boring. It's not exactly a rock concert, is it? I'm not a rock star, I'm not living the life, I've not got groupies or anything. But you know what it does give? It gives my life purpose. And before I did this, I never had purpose before. So it wasn't until I was 35 and a half years old until I had purpose. I kind of knew what I wanted when I was in my 20s I was very interested in comedy I got involved in comedy for quite a while when I hit 30 just before 30 really interested in websites and building websites when I was 27 became interested in hypnosis and NLP and all that stuff but I didn't have I didn't know what I wanted to do with it until I was 35 
and then this started and I have a purpose uh, it's not showing off or bragging it's just it's really important that we all find our purpose and it's not like I'm saying I was born to do this I'm just saying I've got a purpose I've got something that's meaningful to me the most meaningful thing to me is this uh, making these recordings and helping people and I don't get a lot of feedback but I got a, uh, a letter, or got an email today from someone that listens to my Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcasts, And it was beautiful, what she wrote. Absolutely beautiful. And it just brightened my whole day up. And that sense of purpose increased. So I think even with, even though I've been diagnosed with bipolar and emotionally unstable personality disorder thing, after I started this, that was in 2011, after I got a degree in counselling, I still had a purpose. I still had issues of anxiety, still had issues with stress. Still have mood swings, extreme mood swings sometimes. Really extreme. But I still have a purpose. It's like that ground, the the groundwork's being done, the um, I'm trying to think what the name for it what well, is called the groundwork isn't it for a building the support I've got the support there I've got the reason we all need to have a reason that reason something it's almost like it's a handle to hold on to sometimes I've really got to hold on to it very tightly and sometimes I can't even get to hold on to it, but I just remember it's there. And in my flat, I go in the laptop. That's what it's for, there for. It's there for me to work on the podcasts. The phone, it's here for the, you know, to work on the podcast. Everything, the chair, that's where I sit down when I make podcasts. I've got books on bookshelves. All that stuff I will use at some point to contribute towards podcasts, uh, recordings that hopefully help people. And I know that I'm going on about myself, but the reason for it is just to kind of try and put over or express how beneficial I find what I do is to me. As far as having a purpose, having, and this isn't just a purpose, this is a life purpose, something that I'm going to spend the rest of my life doing, as long as I can. And on a bad day, I don't appreciate it. But on a good day, or even an average day, it can feel really nice. Just to look at the stats, see that I've had 3,000 downloads or whatever for the day. Maybe had a message through, seeing people are going to the website. Knowing that, you know, pretty much every minute of every day someone is listening to me around the world. And I just, I hope 
that those people are benefiting, that you are benefiting. It's just a bunch of words, it's just ideas, it's that stuff sinks in. And I've had criticism over the years, sometimes from hypnotherapists and hypnotists saying, it's not real hypnosis what you do, because they think I should be counting people down and walking, imagine walking downstairs and, uh, you know, kind of doing all that trancey stuff. But I'm not trying to, this is different. It's a very different style. This is suggestions of ideas that you can get emotionally involved with and actually the more you listen to hopefully positive things that I'm saying, the more powerful the message is and more transformational it becomes. Because this 50 minutes or hour that you're listening to this, you could have been doing something else. You could have been watching the news. And you're going to get more benefit from listening to me than you will watching the news. Because this, okay, you get to know what's going on in the world. So that's a benefit, obviously, in itself. But there's very, I mean, there's, there's hardly anything in the way of positivity in the news. Not a huge amount of positivity on television at all or in newspapers. So what this is, is it's separating, taking a step back from that stuff. Because everything that we listen to, everything that we watch on telly, every conversation we have, has an effect. And the more often you hear something, the more of an effect it has. On all of us, it's the same for all of us. So if you're listening to somebody telling you that you're going to be okay. And you listen every day and you're being told every day that you're going to be fine. You're going to work through this. You're going to find a way around the obstacles. You're going to be well and you're going to be happy because you deserve to be happy. And you're going to find ways to be kind to yourself. And you're going to start looking forward to the future. The future that you create in your own mind. That's all the future is. It's just creativity. That's all it is, is what's in our mind. So... If you know, if you've got a, a job interview in ten days' time, or you've got a date, a date with someone in ten days' time, you can spend the next day, ten days, imagining it going really bad, or you can spend ten days imagining it going really well. Now, technically, I would say, either way, it's going to go how it goes. So if it goes really bad, or it goes really well, you deal with it on the day. But before that, you've had 10 days of feeling really good, or if you choose, 10 days of feeling shitty. It's a choice. However, the reality 
added on to that is if you spend 10 days imagining it going terribly there's a really big chance it will go terrible because that's what you programmed into your mind that's what you're programmed in to do you've almost been rehearsing for it to go wrong but if you spend 10 days prior to going on that date or going to that interview imagining it going really well feeling really confident having all the answers you know the quick witted just feeling wonderful I don't know what the percentage is the chances of that being a much more enjoyable experience for you but it will be guaranteed a much more enjoyable experience for you and the other person as opposed to if you'd spent 10 days imagining the worst because it's going to be crappy for you it's probably not going to be a very nice experience for the other person either possibly but either way if you spend 10 days imagining the future it's going to be lovely and really brilliant it's going to be better than what it would be if you'd imagined it was going to be crappy guaranteed always doesn't mean it's going to be exactly how you imagined it's going to be because we don't know what something's going to be like we don't know what it's going to be like to win the lottery until you've won the lottery no one knows what it's going to be like what's going to feel like to walk down the aisle and be married until you actually do it we can imagine all we like but guaranteed it's going to be a lot more pleasurable if you imagine it's going to be pleasurable so listening to these recordings gives you an opportunity to actually take a step back from that overthinking and to realise that you do have choices you really do and you've chosen to listen to me waffle on for an hour as if you haven't fallen asleep hopefully you haven't that's why I always say at the beginning only listen when you can safely close your eyes because I do tend to fall asleep when I listen to people talking. It doesn't always go down well at work, but you know. So, what is it that you need in your life? Which was the original question. What need is required? What need or needs are not being met currently? It might possibly very much will require taking it action of some kind. Because... You know, I'd, I'd quite like to have a girlfriend. But I'm not going to meet anyone sitting in here, staying in my home. So if I actually want to, really wanted to date someone and have a relationship, I'm going to have to leave my home at some point. So there's some things, they won't happen without action. We 
which I think is quite good really in a way and I'm also I'm always trying to think about how someone who's listening to this how you may be thinking how you may be feeling questions you may have statements you might be saying and things like well I, you don't know what it feels like to be me you're right I don't no one knows what it feels like to be another person we don't know it's one of those things that humans say to each other I know how you feel no you don't you don't know how anyone feels you know how perhaps you felt when you went through a similar experience you perhaps know how you feel now imagining how they are feeling now so basically you just tell them that you care but sometimes it feels like just telling someone I really care doesn't seem like enough kind of need to say I know how you feel no you don't none of us do I think that's quite good though it's almost nice to know that we're all unique because if we were all the same then we, you know, depending on who the blueprint was based on, there wouldn't be any anxiety disorders if we were all able to or have that ability for things just to bounce off of us. Or we could all be angry if the blueprint was from someone that was angry constantly, always complaining, always blaming the world for everything, always blaming outside for what's happening inside when outside is not responsible for how you feel. All I really want, or hope for, from this particular podcast is to say that I know what it was like for me, or what it is like for me, to suffer with and to try and deal with and not always do a very good job of it. Sometimes do quite a good job with mental illness, mental ill health, ongoing. Without giving up. Never, ever giving up on myself, never. And I kind of, it's not my place to want anything for you, but I can hope that you also can be in that position and are in that position, if not yet, will be in that position of never, ever give up on yourself, ever. Always trust that things will be okay. Always, eventually. And it probably is gonna take action and energy and focus 
and finding a purpose, your purpose. And you may, everyone listen to this, may have a purpose that they, that you, you know, is just the reason, you know, the most important thing, something that is bigger than you, where you're helping other people. And there's more I can say on that, but I will leave it for today because I've probably talked for even longer than normal. So they're the two things I'd mention. They're the two things that I would suggest. First of all, look at what needs are not currently being met. Maybe look at, dis, you know, discuss in your mind. Maybe get a piece of paper. Write down what's lacking from your life whether it's human contact whether it's um, it could be anything it could be absolutely anything maybe you're, you're using a you're sitting in a chair that's uncomfortable and you're putting off getting a new chair or replacing it and perhaps you can replace it, you can afford to replace it, but you're putting it off and you're kind of suffering sitting there and it's, you know, not doing your back any good. That's just an example. I like to say that because I know that that could be way off for your situation. Maybe you look at getting a different chair. If your shoes have got holes in them, you kind of need to get some new shoes. That's obvious stuff. So there might be something that's bugging you. You don't even, you're so used to it that you don't, you don't take notice of it anymore. But if you were to make that change, it could be decorating the room redecorating it it could be putting away stuff that you don't want to look at anymore it could be buying some books starting a new hobby maybe starting that hobby that you always secretly wanted to do or going back and restarting something that you used to love and you stop doing it for whatever reason. So I'm going to leave you with these, those thoughts. And if you'd like to tell me your story and include how listening to me has been useful, then please contact me, go to my website send an email, you can send me a letter by post, you can, um, there's a form that you can fill in and just send it, and I can include you in your story, and I can uh, answer questions if you've got them in a recording. So I'm going to go, thank you for listening, remember to be kind to yourself, because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.